we're fortunate to have a former Congressman Fred Grandy join us on a regular basis. We are, uh, because of that, ahead of the curve on most stories. Uh, last week, uh, Fred was uh, sharing with us what was happening with Michelle Bachman, great member of Congress out of uh, Minnesota. And in the last week since then, man, uh, there's been a gang attack on Michelle Bachman. Unfortunately, a lot of it has come from uh, my side of the aisle, which absolutely sickens me. So I wanted to touch base with uh, with Fred on that, get up to date on it. Fred, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, exactly related to what you were talking about. Didn't we close our discussion last week with you telling me you used to be in the wrestling business? Yes, that is correct, sir. Well, then you will be pleased to know that our efforts to talk and flesh out this controversy between Michelle Bachman and her four other colleagues and the establishment media and political establishment has probably triggered the greatest tag team match in the history of Washington wrestling. You are the new Vince McMahon of oh. political combat. Oh, goodness. In this corner, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, Mark Levin... Former special prosecutor Andy McCarthy, the guy that put the blind shake away, right. Newt Gingrich, and John Bolton defending the Bachman team, right. who we call the Freedom Five. That's In right. this corner, Congressman Keith Ellison, uh. Anderson Cooper, uh. John McCain, Yikes. Speaker of the House John Boehner, uh. Senator Marco Rubio, and the Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, all of whom who have called Michelle Bachman to task. So this is becoming a full-scale Donnybrook. But the wow. good news in all of this is the questions are hanging out there. Why is the Muslim Brotherhood exposed so obviously to this administration in so many ways? And right. You know, this, the, the, the other side is loving to kind of pile on what they think is an ad hominem attack on Huma Abedin, who you know is mm -hmm. Secretary Clinton's uh, deputy chief of staff. But that is only a tiny piece of this investigation, and these questions won't go away. So assuming we can continue to kind of get the message out there. I'm not so sure that we haven't done a service here, you and I, in, in, in promoting this. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about why John McCain and John Boehner and a couple of other folks who I thought were supposed to be playing on our side have now ganged up and uh, really taken a whole bunch of uh, cheap shots on, uh, on Michelle Bachman. What's going on there? Well, in, in McCain's case, and I'm just speculating here because McCain and I don't communicate at all, Yeah. Um, I would have to assume that John McCain got a direct call from Hillary Clinton. Uh, and because there is a kind of coziness yep. uh, among senior officials on either side of the aisle, I think she probably called him up and said, John, I need a solid. One of my uh, closest confidants is being attacked unfairly. And he raced to the floor, surely without reading any of the supporting material, some of which I talked about on your program last week when I read pieces of Michelle's 16-page response to Keith Ellison. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think that's the, sa the same thing is true of, of the Speaker and Senator Rubio. Um, as far as, as Congressman Rogers is concerned, I really haven't looked into his criticism, but I would have to say this, and again, I'm speculating. This is a Michigan congressman who represents a lot of the Lansing area. Uh... Michigan, probably more than any other state in the Union, is is subject to a lot of influence by Muslim political groups. Yeah. Um, obviously, he doesn't represent Dearborn, right? But Lansing is where Care and Isna and other groups go to mm -hmm. get their message into the Michigan legislature. And Governor Rick Snyder has resisted any attempts that we have made. And when I may say we, I mean the the Center for Security Policy and other groups that we work with to perhaps advance this American Law for American Courts initiative. So. I, I don't I don't know about that, but I would have to say the Michigan delegation as a group has been surprisingly quiet on this issue, and it may just be that they have to cover their own political bases. Wow, boy, what a, what a travesty, anyway, though. Well, what can I tell you? I mean, the the good news is we now have people like you and Limbaugh and Beck and Levin talking about this on a regular basis. We have. Uh, very comprehensive reports by Andy McCarthy. Newt Gingrich has stood up. John Bolton said on a radio program just this week, he said, look, I had to be vetted like this when mm -hmm. I was trying to become the representative to the United Nations. Sure. And it's unpleasant, but it has to be done. Right. And, and the question that Michelle Bachman and her colleagues are asking, specifically related to Huma Abedin, is why shouldn't we ask questions 
about family members mm -hmm. who may or may not have ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. And we've done a little bit of research on this since we talked, Jeff. And, yep. and Huma Abedin's mother, among other things, has been involved in an organization that is advocating for the repeal of laws that prevent female genital mutilation and marital rape and childhood oh. marriage. Oh my I mean, th so, so, and, and look, if this had been Condoleezza Rice, and right. she had had a cousin who was in a black nationalist movement, or yeah. was at any rate related yeah. to groups that were criminal, that would be out there. Yeah. And we'd have to know that. That's all these people are asking. Wow. I, it's just, well, oh, no, I don't know. It, 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 it's just amazing, and uh, I hope that Michelle Bachman is able to stand up under all of this. I really do. I mean, she's a tough lady. She's... Well, we, we have talked to her, and she is holding tight. But, you know, anything that you can do, I, I don't, I'm not sure she wants to talk about this stuff right now because, yeah. obviously, she has been badly hammered, uh, and Louis Gohmert and Trent Franks the same way. Mm -hmm. But any support that we can give them, whether it's contacting their offices yep. or, or having them on shows like yours, is helpful because I got to tell you, Jeff, this is this is not going to end. There, while we're talking about this, the Council for American Islamic Relations is trying to keep the Joint Counterintelligence Training Academy, where mm -hmm. our counterintelligence officers get their training, from using a guy named Reza Khalili. I don't right. know if you know him or yeah, not. he's been on the but air with then us. Then you know that that yeah. he is a deep cover CIA operative who right. turned from the Revolutionary Guard yep. in Iran to report on what's going on there. Well, Kerr says. He is anti, uh, he's anti-Islam, so you can't use him. He's one of our best covert ops we've got, and now they're taking him to task because he converted to Christianity. It's incredible. It doesn't it's get incredible. any better, my friend. No, it doesn't. Fred, it's always good to have you here, buddy. Former Congressman Fred Grandy, uh, you had this story last week. You heard it from, uh, from Fred last week with uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman doing the right thing and getting attacked. I mean, it, it's amazing to me that the attacks are coming in on her from uh, from so-called conservatives, so-called Republicans. Uh, and once again, it's uh, it's talk radio standing up for Michelle Bachman. As uh, as Fred pointed out, it's me, it's Mark Levin, it's Glenn Beck, it's Rush Limbaugh. I mean, that's not a bad team uh, on which to find yourself, I'll tell you that.